I think all of us know, we all have to know, that no matter how much we might like, enjoy, or love professional wrestling, past, present, or maybe looking into its future, we know that it's glory days, it's true glory days of the territory days, the 80s, the Monday Night Wars Attitude Era. Those times are gone, and they're never coming back. Never. And what I mean by that specifically is, we're never going to see the level of domestic, meaning U.S. viewership, of pro wrestling shows like we used to. Think about the main event match back in February of 88 between Hogan and Andre, the big rematch. It drew 33 million viewers. That's never going to happen again. Halftime Heat back in the day during the Super Bowl got like 9 million viewers. You used to have a period of time in wrestling where Monday Night Football was fucked because of wrestling. Wrestling between Raw on Monday nights and Nitro on Monday nights going head to head. We're doing 10 plus million viewers or so combined each week. They were kicking the snot out of Monday Night Football. We're never going to see that again. Never. And that's due to a variety of different reasons. The lack of star power, lack of compelling, interesting writing, storytelling, character development, star building, you know, any number of things. But what you hear a lot of times is people try to justify or excuse this when it comes to wrestling viewership as a whole or specifically maybe to WWE and Raw's viewership talking about, well, people have been cord cutting over the years and viewing habits have changed. And look, I don't disagree that that's happened. That's obviously happened. To pretend like it hasn't happened at all would be delusional, disingenuous. Of course it's happened. As this happens, as time goes on, technology changes and trends and patterns change. Television certainly is not immune from that. You could also say with wrestling, like it's a cyclical thing where you'll have periods of up and down because you'll get to a hot era and then those fans grow out of wrestling um, because of this, that, or the third reason. And then you have to build up the new generation of fans and so forth. So yeah, there's definitely been some cord cutting over the years. I'm never going to expect you know, Monday Night Raw to have seven or eight million viewers consistently again. And that shit ain't happening. And they were doing that, you know, when they were running head to head against WCW Monday Nitro, who was doing four or five million viewers. Like, we're not, I hope nobody's delusional enough to think that that's ever going to happen again. Especially in this internet and streaming age. Especially over the past two decades, as you've seen us become much more of a, a highlight, epic fails, you know, instant gratification society, like, you know, it doesn't, doesn't seem to be that we're ever going to get back to anything close to that level. But we've got to stop using that as a blanket excuse for why Raw's viewership is down and why so few people in general in the United States watch professional wrestling. You can make all the excuses that you want. Cord cutting, viewing habits changed. Well, their international viewership has grown, even though when you look at some of the countries, that also is not fucking true. At what point in time do you stop blaming all of the other factors and you start looking at the fact that, hey, the reason people's viewing habits changed is because the wrestling business made them change their viewing habits. Cord cutting be damned. You can't use that excuse entirely across the board. Like you look at the recent Raw ratings for this week. What was it? 1.4 something million viewers? Just two years ago, they were doing, in that similar time, they were doing 2.3, 2.4 million viewers. That's almost a 40% decrease in viewership in two years. And I don't care what type of spin you want to put on it. I don't care what type of anything you want to put on it. The reality is, is if wrestling was good enough, and in particular WWE sports entertainment, Monday Night Raw was good enough, you wouldn't be losing a million viewers over the course of two years. 
You can talk about how relevant the Nielsen ratings are and this and that and the third and everything else. But the reality is it is still a metric. It is still being used. Your performances in the key demos suck compared to what they used to. And your overall viewership, which does matter because it is a measurement of how large your scope and impact is on the grander scale. So that does matter. You know, somehow we only became about the demo in the past year or so because, of course, that was a Meltzer Alvarez tactic to talk about the importance of the demo for AEW in their ratings picture. And I agree, like, the demo does matter. It absolutely does. But there is still a piece of the overall viewership still fucking matters in the larger grand scheme of things. A million viewers that watched wrestling two years ago didn't stop watching wrestling because they all cut the cord. That's stupid. And if you believe that, you're being delusional. A million viewers didn't stop watching Raw from two years ago just because of this factor or that factor. They entirely stopped watching because there's no reason to watch a three-hour fucking snooze fest every week. And before anybody wants to sit there and jump on this shit about, oh, it's WWE, listen, that shit is bad and we all damn good and well know it. But y'all also need to wake up. If you think this is going to get any better once Vince McMahon is gone or not in charge of the company or dead, where the hell have you been the past decade? You've seen some of the impact of Stephanie and Hunter's leadership in the company. They've been there. What the hell makes you think that they can do any better? Look at NXT, are you fucking kidding me? They can't even get a million viewers with NXT and now they're running out of pose. That's some clown shit right there if you ask me. And then here come the AEW people talking about, well, WWE just isn't for the modern wrestling fan. Now, we could look at AEW and say, you know, for a show back in October 2019 that was running head-to-head -head up against another show in NXT, they did 1.4 million viewers in their debut. What was it, like 2 point something million people watched wrestling on that Wednesday night. Right? This is back in October 2019. You're now in July of 2021, and AEW is lucky to crack a million viewers unopposed. Like at some point in time, the excuses have got to stop. You may enjoy that form of wrestling. You may like it. This may be, when you talk about AEW, the whole thing you thought wrestling should be all along, and they're giving it to you. So you're remiss to leverage any real criticism or say anything that could be perceived as negative, because at the end of the day, you don't want to feel like you've been wrong all along. But the reality is you are. And the numbers bear that out. How in the hell do you go from two plus million people watching wrestling on a Wednesday night to less than two years later, you're lucky to crack a million for one show, unopposed, on Wednesday night? When do the excuses stop? Stop blaming playoff basketball. Stop blaming these extenuating circumstances. Take your cord-cutting excuses and shove them. No. Casual fans aren't really watching WWE much anymore, especially Raw, because it's a fucking snooze fest. Three hours is at least one hour too long for that damn show, and you could clearly tell most weeks they've phoned it in, they don't care, it's booked for an audience of one, and Vince doesn't even know what the hell he wants anymore. But AEW, the product that's supposed to be cutting edge, the one that's supposed to be different, revolutionary, and changing the business is just more bullshit. And you gotta realize they don't know what they're doing either. And you're gonna sit there and say, well, Tony Khan's a genius and Tony, let's put it this way. Let's cut that crap right now. How do you know what Tony Khan is or isn't? It's almost like one of those trading places type of theories. Take you, and I mean you, yes you, put him, put you, meaning guy or gal, in Tony Khan's position where he grows up with a billionaire father, gets a top level education and all of this, has his daddy's billions to fall back on, let's see how genius you might look in a similar type of situation and position. Like, let's not confuse nepotism with genius here. 
And the fact is, if he was such a damn genius, he would find a way to consistently get his show above a million viewers and be growing his audience. Instead, they're consistently shrinking their audience with a brief aberration where they get a spike in viewership in one week, but then they immediately lose it and lose it back more. It's good that AEW can take their viewership and convert it at a pretty high number relative to others in wrestling history in terms of pay-per-view buys, but at some point in time, when you're drawing from a smaller and smaller pool of viewers, that's only going to pay off for so long. The reality is, is WWE doesn't know what the hell they're doing anymore when it comes to Raw specifically in terms of appealing to viewers. AEW also doesn't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to wanting to grow and expand their audience. And if your defense for them is going to be, well, they don't want to grow their audience. They want to appear to the hardcores. That's not how business works. That's certainly not how television business should be fucking working. You don't want to stay stagnant because if you're not growing, you're dying. And in business, that's just an unequivocal fact. Any basic business person with a salt of knowledge about business will tell you, we don't want to sit there and stay stagnant or contract. We want to expand and grow in a well-managed, reasonable way, sure. But why in the hell would you want to limit yourself? You want to limit yourself because you don't know how the hell to grow as much as anything else. We've got to stop blaming cord cutting and other competition and all this other bullshit. We got to start looking at the real truth is that the leadership of WWE has driven away millions of fans that aren't coming back and they apparently don't care to bring them back. You know, at this pace, Raw is going to be hovering around a million viewers or below sometime in 2022. They're going to be getting some of the worst like TNA Dixie Carter era TV viewership numbers. That's how bad this shit is heading. That's a reflection of their product. And in a place and time in the wrestling landscape where AEW could be making significant headway and be saying, hey, you know what? Our show could be doing more than Raw. It might not quite be able to match up to SmackDown just because of SmackDown being on Fox. That's on network television. It's a whole different animal we can't get to at this point. They absolutely could get to Raw. They're sitting there trying to pat themselves onto the fucking back because Dave Meltzer tells them that the demo performance is the only thing that matters. It's important, but it's not the only thing that matters. You got to get more eyeballs on your damn product. Get more eyeballs. That's how you also improve your damn performance in the demo rating. That's how you get more merchandise sold, more tickets to live events sold. Like you, just so many things you could freaking do. And AEW has driven fans away too. And if you think that I'm wrong, explain to me without making excuses how you say in a year and a half you go from 1.4 million viewers to eight to 900,000 for a Wednesday Night Dynamite. And that 1.4 was done when they were head to head against another company. And of course, you're only going to make freaking excuses about, well, you know, that was exciting. It was new. It was the debut. We didn't expect it. I agree initially, was not expecting him to stay at 1.4 million viewers. That's totally logical to me. I get that. Like, some people are going to check it out the first time and be like, oh, that's bullshit. I don't like it. Other people are going to check it out and be like, you know what? I'm going to stick with this. But they can't even stick at a million. They're not consistently growing. Like, that's not good. You need to stop making excuses for that too. The reason fewer people than ever are watching wrestling is because... WWE and AEW exclusively have made it that way. You're past the point of the cord cutting and the changing viewership habits. The reason viewership habits are changing is because of these stupid ass wrestling companies. Is that their product was so good and their product was captivating enough that got you to emotionally connect to it. No matter what other viewing habits may have changed for people, they would find a way to watch Raw on Monday night or dynamite on Wednesday or whatever the hell night it happens to appear. But they don't. And we need to stop making excuses for it. And we need to start expecting these companies to do better. Because if they don't, in a couple of years, we're going to be looking at a much, much different wrestling landscape and definitely not in a good way.